Welcome to the press conference for showing up by Kelly Reichardt in competition at the 2022 Cannes Film Festival. It's a pleasure to introduce the film's team. I'll start next to me with the film's uh, producer, Neil Kopp. He's with uh, Film Science, which has produced four of Kelly's uh, features. He's also among the many other films he's produced. I'll mention Jeremy Saunier's The Green Room and Gus, of, uh, Gus Van Sant's Paranoid Park, both of which premiered in Cannes. Neil. At the other end of the table, the DOP, he's created an incredible body of work for a stunning list of directors who include Ang Lee, Gus Van Sant, David Fincher, Tom Ford, Noah Baumbach, and of course, Kelly Reichardt. This is, this is Christopher Blaufeld's fifth film he shot for Kelly. The film scriptwriter. He's an, uh, also an author. He's been nominated for an uh, Emmy for his work on the miniseries Mildred Pierce. This is his sixth collaboration with Kelly Reichardt, Jonathan Raymond. In the role of Lizzie, a four time Academy Award nominee, an Emmy Award winner for the series Fosse Verdon, she's been nominated for six Golden Globes, of which she's won twice. Among her upcoming projects, I'll mention Steven Spielberg's The Fablemans. This is her fourth turn starring for Kelly Reichert, Michelle Williams. <laughs> Huge pleasure. In 2006, her old joy was the first American film to win the Rotterdam Film Festival Targa Award. In 2008, she showed Wendy and Lucy in a certain regard here. Last year, the Centre Pompidou organized a retrospective of her work. It's a huge honor to welcome the film's director, and Kelly Reichardt. <laughs> Kelly, can I ask to begin with a question about the title? Can you? It has different meanings. Can you tell us how you came up with it, what the film means, the title means to you? Sure. I just want to say that my friend Neil has produced seven of our films seven. together. <laughs> um, he's been... <laughs> been um, <laughs> he's okay. No, Neil's been making everything happen for a really long time. So um, I think John came up with the title showing up. I'm pretty sure. Um, and it has different, uh, you know, you could take it different ways, of course. Um, uh, showing up for each other, showing up to the work table every day. Uh, um, yeah, there's all different, uh, I guess, in the small term, in the bigger term, uh, we could think about showing up. So, John, you want to add anything to that? <laughs> yeah, the other I'll say one other thing. Yeah. yeah, I'll just add. Uh, like it is about artists making yeah. art, and a lot of those stories are about the struggle of making the art. But I think for us, the showing up part of making art is a huge, like you, you make art within a community, and like people are showing up for each other all the time in different ways during that creative process. Mm -hmm. So I think that was like useful for us. Thank you. What, what was the starting point for the film, and how did you develop the characters? Um, originally, we went to uh, Vancouver with the idea of writing a, a bio film about the artist Emily Carr, uh, the painter. And uh, we had, there was a book we had read with a, a period of her life where she was a landlord for 10 years in hopes that being a landlord would allow her more time to paint. But this job kind of ended up consuming her world. And we thought Emily Carr was this very obscure painter. And then we went to Canada and we found out that she's like the Elvis of um, <laughs> painters in Canada. And so uh, I think uh, it was more about wanting to make a film um, where about a regional uh, artist and with lower stakes and it really more being about the day-to-day -day work, but... Yeah. Great, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and your characters? 
Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> well, um, the characters uh, are, I mean, so much of the film, yeah, did end up being really grounded in uh, our friends and neighbors in Portland. Like a lot of the locations are places that we know a lot of the, um, and a lot of the characters ended up being kind of composites of a lot of working artists that we know in Portland. And uh, I mean, it became almost funny at certain points to realize how many different people were going into okay. these different uh, characters. And um, or how many people, local people, were seeing themselves. Exactly. In every like how many people were, were going to think we were ripping off their lives, basically? But it's like <laughs> exactly like there was actually eight of you who are exactly doing the same thing. So. Um, yeah, there was like, it was a target rich environment as far as like uh, local artists go. And, and I think for, uh, well, I should say that a lot of the school is uh, based, uh, inspired by uh, the Black Mountain College, um, which I think makes sense in this uh, time because, uh, yeah, that, School was sort of born out of the idea of, uh, well, people leave, fleeing the Bauhaus and coming to the, st the States to make a school with art at the center with the concept that if you put critical thinking at the beginning in the center of the school through art, it would, um, you know, make for really good citizens and voters and ultimately democracy. Um, and meanwhile, our school, our real school, is closed down, you know, so. And then there was Michelle. <laughs> and Michelle came uh, with uh, the, I think it was a picture of Lee Bonacue that really um, helped us both, right? A little bit, yeah. Um, the artist, the sculptor, Lee Bonacue, and um, just in a magic start, it's a starting place, right, for, uh, uh, who Michelle would develop into Lizzie, if I speak, if for me it was, I don't know, it's maybe not for you, I don't know. Michelle? <laughs> um, I, that just made me, that made me recall uh, that act, like that when we work together, it actually always does start with photography. Mm -hmm. Like it's the first thing that you'll send me. It was yeah. the first thing that you ever sent me for Wendy and Lucy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it actually like the the y you Kelly yeah. will will um, send me things that have been on her mind and um, and it starts with photography and then it moves into film and books but there's always a kind of like little research packet that comes ahead. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to open up uh, to the questions we have in the center. Yes. Okay, a uh, question from Brazil, Rodrigo from the show. I have two questions. The first one for Mrs. Reichert. Your movie is adorable. And I would like to hear a few words about the real sculptures that we see ah. and the artists who made them. And if you could throw a few words about your editing process to Mrs. Williams, how was the interaction with the cat? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Um, I'll talk about the art. You talk about the cat. <laughs> um, OK, I'll start so you can think of an answer. Um, uh, I'm happy to talk about the artists. The, um, uh, the th three main artists, uh, Cynthia Latte is the artist that made the work that uh, Lizzie is making. And she's a Portland artist, uh, I think about maybe 20 years ago or something. John took me to her uh, studio in Portland and uh, her artwork fills our friends' houses and we wrote the script with her in mind. Um, Michelle Segre, who uh, does Joe's art, uh, Hong Chao, who plays Joe, uh, her art, she lives in the Bronx and uh, I've been following her stuff for several years and uh, Chris and I went to her studio in the Bronx and made a short film just studying her and filming her 
on 16, just a day in the life, uh, a couple days in the life of what it's like working in the studio. And uh, the third artist with the glass is uh, Jessica Jackson Hutchins. And I um, also filmed her in uh, at Cal State. Uh, she sometimes works in ceramics, and uh, she's also a friend of ours. And uh, she's recently working in glass. Her studio is right near the Camera House in Portland, and we were going there a lot. And it's just, just someone who's oh, it's like a factory. They're always, always working, and everything's tactile and immediate, kind of the opposite of filmmaking. And. Um, and so uh, these were, uh, this was the art that was sort of dreamed of and cast early on and, uh, and somehow we were able to um, actually have that artwork in the film. And then there's artwork throughout the film of uh, close friends or artists we really admire in Portland, uh, Storm Tharp and uh, painter Michael Brophy who's, was I've been working with like on storybooks, I mean storyboards and stuff for years. He's uh, a painter friend and uh, Chris Johansson, uh, Johanna Jackson, a lot of, and then we were able to hire, the art department was able to hire a lot of uh, local artisans to fill out the art for the school. And so, um, yeah, it was a real lucky thing to, um, be able to bring all the art into the, um, but more importantly about the cat, <laughs> Michelle. I still don't know what to say about the cat. It's actually two cats. <laughs> You're gonna give away the big cat sorry, secret? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Pluto and Sun. <laughs> I miss the dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I will say about Michelle and the cat, to me, it's always a moment of uh, just really seeing how uh, all the, with all the machinery happening around, uh, when I, especially when I'm editing and I'm watching all the small things with, between you and the animals, how you just manage to block that all out and really be so present. Um, and it really, uh, shows up <laughs> in the way you deal with the cat, the animals, I, I, I really think, yeah. Well, I, I think the animals, I did once work with a monkey who really impressed me, but I think the your animals- car, Your <laughs> car had a monkey. This that monkey, great. this monkey should teach acting classes, yeah. talk about presence. Yeah. Um, but the thing that is nice about animals is that they, they don't know that there's a camera on and so they're always in the moment and so they're, um, there, they demand the same thing of you. They can really make you look like a like an actor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Non-actor. Mm -hmm. What animal is next? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do like this monkey idea. <laughs> <laughs> Question on the left, yes, in the front. Hello, my name is Omar Farni, and I write for the Italian website, ODG Magazine. First of all, congratulations Kelly and Michelle for the wonderful movie. My question is uh, quite simple. This is your, first, your fourth movie together. Could you tell us a bit more about your, uh, relac uh, your, uh, sorry, how your collaboration has evolved throughout the years? And uh, Kelly, could you tell us uh, a few words about The Pigeons? Thank you so much. Well, I don't want to talk about the pigeon because it gives away too much of the film. Um, but there's a pigeon. Um, and uh, what really, they're nice birds, actually. We look at them all, I think everybody looks at them differently. Uh, the day we finished shooting, actually, uh, I, we just finished. Oof, first morning, I'm walking in Portland and stillness and quiet, and I'm walking and a bird fell out of a nest, a baby bird right in front of my uh, feet. <laughs> and I was like, what do I have to do with this bird now? <gasps> it's my first day free. <laughs> There's this bird to contend with. Um, but, oh, collaboration. You go, Michelle. Uh, 
like this. It's this. I, I, it's this. <laughs> well, it sounds a lot like this, actually. Yeah, it's a, I, I, it's I, 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 I don't know. Yeah. It's like, it's just like, oh, okay. Yeah. That's kind of how it. Yeah. I mean, I feel like. at first feel like we're figuring everything out as we go. As much planning as there is, it's just sort of when you finally. But don't you it think feels like the, the same as always, though. It yeah. feels like the way that it felt in the first movie and the third movie that we um, are figuring it out as we go, but then also like reminiscing about the past at the same time. So, but the the process doesn't really yeah. feel like it's changed. Except for this time, you yeah, you really had a long process, almost without like just between you and Cynthia before I, yeah, just working with the clay and all. Anyway, <laughs> what can be but said? It was like that on Meeks, too, because there was yeah. the guns and there's... Building, yeah, learning to do the to bread in the ground. Fire. Yeah. I know there's always like a little camp for Michelle before we start of, uh, we don't really re ever rehearse. It's just uh, learning how to do the things that she'll be doing in the film is kind of the prep work. And... Um, and I think it, she likes to get in her clothes and feel out how her body's going to work and all those things. But there's lots of surprising things to me as it's unfolding because you're like living with an idea in your head and then it uh, comes into this other uh, place. I don't know. I always, I'm always surprised by what Michelle. Uh, and I was, had my mind kind of blown. Uh, Todd Haynes and I were watching um, Fosse Vernon, and we were uh, going, wow. <laughs> Michelle's like going to a whole new place. So, um, yeah. And then you, Kelly was like, bring some of that to this. Like, just bring some like, big ideas. And then they just got smaller and smaller and smaller. <laughs> <laughs> They're just good to have around. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, how Can you speak to how your collaboration with Kelly's changed over all those films? And also what Kelly's specific needs are, or how working with her is different from the other films you produced? Um, Careful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, uh, hi. Um, I don't know. Our collaboration is very natural. We start really early on. Um, usually, Kelly shares and John and you know, a snippet of an idea when there's, you know, an early script or even just a, a, a fragment of something and we start talking about usually just how we can pull it off. Um, you know, we usually have an idea of a time frame that we want to do something in, just practically speaking, and um, we get into it. Yeah. Um, it really just starts at the very, very beginning and um, we build it yeah. one piece at a time, yeah. I think. And a lot of, um, just because we've made so many films in Oregon, uh, a cop is from, born and raised in Portland, so uh, scouting's always been a big part of our uh, world together, too, uh, in figuring it out. Um, and on this movie, getting the school location was like, one of the very first missions in terms of the physical production, um, which was spared um, by a, like the college closed and um, we were able to get in there uh, in between a big renovation um, from a local private school. So we really kind of lucked out and we kind of built our world around the school. It's where we worked for many months in prep and continued shooting there. Kind of, that was home base. And, um, you know, as far as uh, collaboration with Kelly and other directors, it's sort of all the same, you know? We just start at the beginning, we figure out what the movie needs, and uh, try, to, try to be there where we're needed, and help, and stay out of the way as much as possible. Thank you. Question yeah. in the front. Hello, uh, my name is David Clovis. I'm from Canada. First off, Emily Carr. Amazing. Love her work. My, I, like, my <laughs> face lightened when you mentioned her. I was like, yes! Yes! 
Second off, I have a question for Chris and Kelly. So just like the film's protagonist, Lizzie, she's very awkward, but ultimately incredibly human. So speaking more specifically about the shooting type and the subtext that's in there with the film photography itself, I found the usage and the almost the lack of contrast of colors quite interesting. It feels as if the film was just straight, like it came straight out of like of a film processing lab, something that's raw, natural, real, something that's authentic in and of itself of the artistic process. I was wondering, uh, if you could talk about the technique of using film stock for the film and the subtext behind that process. Thank you, and also, what's that camera? I need to know. Um, <laughs> medium format, medium <laughs> 60. Um, I think in regards to the look, I mean, we, we, do, we, we do a lot of testing and prep. So again, like Kelly, um, not unlike everybody else on this uh, table, will get like the ideas and a lot of her inspiration. So it's like watch films or look at photography or even paintings. And so uh, we'll have this, this sort of like foundation of where we want to start and have these inspirations. And then during prep and finding locations, it's now a chance to start testing and finding our look. So there's never been a film where we haven't like really gone through like all the different um, tools available, which are cameras and lenses and filters, and there's, um, we're shooting digital these days, so there's a lot of like lookup tables and um, there's creativity within just like the, 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 um, the metadata and the computer domain. So there's like this, this kind of big process and I'll do some testing and we go into a theater and uh, we sort of like by process of elimination find the look of our film. And that's always an exciting part for me too because it's sometimes we'll pull the slates out so Kelly's just giving us reactions to things she's seeing without actually understanding maybe what the type of lens or even camera is. And then we get to this place where, you know, she'll like sometimes just stand up and hug me. <laughs> and then we know like, all right, this is, this is our film. So it's very bespoke to each project. And this is, is the same process that we do to get that look, yeah. <laughs> Question. Yeah. Hi, guys. I'm Miriam Spritzer from L'Officiel Brazil. I have a question for Kelly and Jonathan and one for Michelle. Um, first of all, I noticed that most of the relationships and, and the characters that are the story centered are women. And I wanted to ask you guys a little bit about these relationships because we see competition a little bit, but admiration showing up. So I wanted to know a little bit of the thought behind, the, the process behind the thought of bringing these relationships to the story. And Michelle, I wanted to know what was the biggest challenge for you on bringing Lizzie to life? Thank you. John, you take it. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I think it was important for us to um, to really embed these characters in families and in their friendships, because we both have families <laughs> and have friends. And, um, and I think the question that became interesting for us is like how and why you make art um, when a lot of people around you are suffering, you know, and when there's a lot of uh, like, in some ways more immediate problems to deal with. Um, and I think both of us feel that it is worthwhile that you do it for a good reason, but, um, but uh, it sort of comes from that struggle of, of being in a life with people that the, that the art comes, and, or, or that the art needs to somehow address. And uh, so yeah, it was just, I think, uh, we've had a lot of conversations about the family relationships and about the, um, a relationship that one has with one's parents or with one's siblings or with one's uh, colleagues, or you know, writing. or writing partners, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, never talk about that. <laughs> um, but um, but I'll, I'll just add that, like, I mean, for me, one of the great joys of all this uh, collaboration with Kelly is that, I mean, Kelly is one of the great students of human behavior that I've ever met. and. Uh, talking with Kelly about people is like a, a really beautiful education, and um, <laughs> a very romantic way of saying gossip. <laughs> yeah, we like to gossip. It's true, exactly. She is a, a great practitioner. Um, but then, and also, I'll say like a great, uh, 
like a, a really interesting moralist also. Like, I mean, we talk about morals a lot and it's like, it's not in the way that like, you should do this, you should do that. But I think Kelly is someone who's interested in the sort of moral equations of like everyday life. And that is um, uh, just really juicy stuff to talk about. That's like when you can find something that really is questionable, um, the conversation can go on for a long time. Um, I suppose, you know, when we started, Kelly said that she wanted to take a, a couple more, a couple, like, bigger swings, maybe, and, um, but, you know, the, the movies, um, you, h how do you, um, cloak things, how do you make them, you know, how do you, because the, the movies feel so, naturalistic and honest and so how, how how much can you get away with in with that kind of like observation and that kind of a camera on you you know there's not a lot of you can't really hide a lot so um what can you fit in that won't stick out I guess yeah we keep writing about um introverts and trying to figure out how to sort of physicalize what all that is, it gets left on Michelle's shoulders a lot. Um, so we try to give her a lot of things to do to try to, <laughs> um, while, she work, while she figures out that problem. <laughs> I always say to Kelly, but is there a there there? Like, what, is it, I'm just I'm trying to like locate the thing that's gonna make all the women uh, differentiate from each other and, um, you know, but still fit inside of these worlds. But it is interesting that I, maybe it just turns out this way. Maybe it's not true. But I, but uh, Michelle, you know, like you know, has a process, and some of which is mysterious to me, and some of which is uh, talked through. And likes, like she's saying, she likes a lot of questions, answers, thinking about it. To me, a lot like Lizzie in her uh, critical just constant critical analytical thing. And um, Hong Chao is very just like bouncing show up every day. I don't think, I'm not sure she asked me a question the entire film. You know, like she did her work with Michelle Segre and she was sort of um, whistling her way uh, through, you know, come on, leave. And uh, it, it, it seemed that there was, I'm not sure if it happens because of the film, but it seemed like some of their processes as actors, um, and maybe it just had to happen that way because, I, you know, Hong's talked about how I, I said to her, you know, when I introduced her to Michelle Segre, I said, you know, you're not playing Michelle Segre, you're just, you're just using her art. And she realized that, you know, Michelle's work is so personal to her, as is Cynthia's. It's, all, it's really hard to separate those things in some way. And uh, so there were these processes that they each had with the artist. Uh, and I don't even really know how much of that is in there or not. Uh, so some of it's mysterious to me. <laughs> Two questions for uh, Jonathan and Kelly. You've said that the, you see the film as a corrective in some ways to the traditional, conventional uh, artist biopic. I wonder if you can talk about that. And also there's a, correct me if uh, you see this differently, but I see a different tone in this film. Um, the humor, the gentle whimsy that's been present, but uh, not at the center of other films of yours. I don't, I don't know if it's, Think of it as a corrective on a biopic. I, I don't think that. I think it's more that um, it's funny because just when people are asking me about the film or writing about, it, they say, uh, "Keep writing that Lizzie has this show that's gonna um, like move the needle on her career." And I've never thought of it that way. I've just thought of it as like a show is like a moment that shows some completion of like a body of work and then it's time for other eyes to come on it and those eyes are everyone that's at the show is are her friends and her family or people at school like it's not that to me the interest is in that there's things in 
making things that are, it's like eating or food, and it's not necessarily about um, getting somewhere or, um, or the way other things in your life, the amount of time, you know, to me, the film's a little bit an ode to teaching, which I've been doing for a long time, and how teaching uh, really feeds what f filmmaking and vice versa in that community. Uh, and so it's not um, as if this world is necessarily something to get out of. It's a place to make work in and to share it with... Uh, the share it with other people. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would just echo that. Like, I think, yeah, if it's a corrective, it's that a lot of other uh, art based narratives, yeah, move towards like success or failure, you know, or like grand recognition or, uh, you know, total obscurity. But that's just not really how the art making process works. Everything is kind of mixed and the judgments are mixed, and you do it for many different reasons. And, um, yeah, that kind of um, whatever rise and fall story is, is yeah, just sort of a fantasy in a way, but um, yeah. Questions? Yes, please, we'll bring you the microphone in the center. Uh, so Diego again from Brazil, Mrs. Heischer, two questions. Uh, you got the Carros d'Or in the beginning of the festival, and I think it was not only a recognition for your entire an incredible body of work, but I think it's also a recognition of the struggle for uh, a higher presence of women directors. I would like to hear a few words from you about that. What do you think has changed uh, concerning the, the increasing of women directing on cinema? And if you allow me a second question, totally different from that, if you could throw a few words about the presence of the great Judy Hirsch on the film. Uh, well, not that much has changed, or you wouldn't ask me the question and put my award in the context of me being a woman. I would just be able to be a filmmaker, you know? Um, so, yeah. Uh, what was the second part of the question? Yeah, Judy. Judy. Oh, Judd Hirsch. Oh, like, Judy Hetch is not in this movie. <laughs> um, uh, Judd Hirsch. Um, he would show up every day and say, ah, Kelly, you're still here. Um, <laughs> um, he, uh, he just keeps going. I mean, uh, I, I, uh, I had really a lot of fun in the editing room looking at uh, Judd's takes because uh, he does everything really every you could go with so many different choices that he makes and it would just be wonderful and pleasurable like he just every take is different and in a different nuanced way um, I had a friend of ours kept tell, saying you know someday you have to work with Judd Hirsch is one of the great American actors and um yeah, I think uh, it's true. He he really, um, yeah, it was really great to, uh, in the editing room, <laughs> it was really great to, to work, <laughs> to, uh, to look at all the choices he made that I couldn't quite keep up with when we were shooting necessarily. Like, I knew they were great. I was enjoying it. It was, um, and I think the family dynamic was, uh, just really pleasurable to watch unfold. Uh, uh, John McGarrow, who we worked with on First Cow, um, as uh, you know, really wanted to work with him and Michelle, and the idea of them being siblings was so exciting. But we were just like, how do we make this family make some sense that you could believe these guys are siblings? So Marianne Plunkett and uh, Judd uh, were sort of the answer to that. Thank you. Uh, Another. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, uh, oh, you're right. Um, 
Anthony D'Alessandro from Deadline. Michelle and Kelly, you have such a rich canon together. Can you tell us more about how you complement one another? You obviously are feeding one another as, as actor to director and vice versa. I don't know, because I'm always surprised when I get the, when I get the, the call to, to come back to the, I, I am. Um, I, I, it like, it moves me anew every time that she, that you would um, still want to investigate something with me after knowing me so well. Um, but no, but it, it's, it's a... Right to the chase with Michelle. <laughs> We're very uh, to the point with each other, I think, very quickly. And it's, uh, so it's, it's nice and fast, right? There's no um, walking on eggshells or anything. Um, and Michelle's always game for whatever um, that you put in front of her. So I don't know. Uh, I think it's all just community. I think all of these relationships are um, come from, uh, get deeper with time and uh, a shorthand gets uh, starts happening because you've worked together before and uh, they're all people that it's everyone knows that making things is hard and it and there's I think a lot of mutual respect and um, love and you can just go to the heart of things and battle it out if you and when you need to to get to the better place without and the, without there being any hurt um, and I and I yeah it's not like right all a glossy smooth uh, they were pretty smooth huh I think uh, I don't know I find it quite easy to work with Michelle <laughs> and um, like I said I always know there's gonna be this other layer that I can't see yet that's gonna appear and uh, never disappoints. Uh, I actually remember the first scene we ever shot together, and I was like, oh, wow, okay. Uh, the first take that Michelle did, and I, I, still, I still feel that way uh, working with Michelle. That's how I feel like mm. when I see that, when I finally see the movies. You don't, you won't see the movie. Well, I can't see this one, but she, it's she, getting harder. She, but, yeah. um, but I always, the, the thing that I always feel is that there's something, there's something that our, our communication is what it is, but there's also, there's another layer that I'm not really privy to, but that um, I get, I'm excited to, to then understand like what else has been on your mind and what the, what the thing is that I'm here to help you uh, uh, bring to life. That like I, I just I love being a part of your. I keep talking to you. I I, I love being a part of her world. I just I, like I I, I I I love it. It's like my. Ah. Okay. Good stuff. <laughs> Speaking of bringing to life, Michelle, we wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for the masks. Well, thank you. Very much. <laughs> Thank you all for the film. Thanks, Robert. It feels like such an afterthought at this point.